our archive, of course, is a source of unique history, and particularly some of places and, and people who don't exist anymore. That's the most valuable stuff in many ways. Take, for instance, O'Rourke's Pub on North Avenue, uh, just west of Well Street. It was a legendary hangout for people like Roger Ebert and, and Nelson Algren and hundreds, maybe thousands of us who used to go there pretty often uh, as a watering hole, particularly on Friday nights. Roger Ebert wrote a wonderful recollection of personal history and view of O'Rourke's in his blog a little while ago. I suggest you go look at it in the uh, description box right here. Another wonderful spot that's gone for good, well, for bad, really, is McCuddy's Pub on 35th Street on the south side of Chicago, right directly across the street from the old Comiskey Park. It was there from 1910 until 1988. When they tore down the ballpark, they also tore down the bar. A legendary bar where Babe Ruth used to go between games of double headers and there's a million stories. We were all hoping and it was told at the time that they were going to rebuild McCutty's when they rebuilt the ballpark but that never happened. But we do have a piece of video that I don't think very many people have seen. Check it out and uh, enjoy McCutty's. Your father opened the tavern right? 1910 February. He's 75 years old in uh, next year, 1985. It's right before the ballpark opened then, right? February, and they opened in July. Mm -hmm. And, and your, your father was a friend of, of the old... Oh, yes, he used to help him sweep the old ballpark clean when it rained and they had roll up their uh, trousers before he had kids and sweep the old ballpark with him. Are you still friends with the Comiskey family? Oh, yes. We practically raised Charlie. He was with my niece and nephew all the time. Took him to see Santa Claus, took him to the show every Sunday. Of course, uh, my mother uh, knew Comiskey from 39th Street. Her father had a big uh, oyster house up there at 39th and State mm -hmm. when he had the old ballpark. So what do you remember most from those early days when the, when the tavern was open? Well, it was all as long as I know it was open. But uh, going back to the era of Babe Ruth and Joe DiMaggio, all of those fellas. Did they come in here? Oh, my mother cooked for all of them. They loved big roast beef and homemade bread. She did all the cooking, and they called her Mama Cutty. She was her mom. And so the, after the ball games, they would come across the street Before here? Before and after, and when it was a double header, the babe would run over to have a beer and a roast beef sandwich in his uniform. That's the truth. You're laughing. It's the truth. How about the modern-day ball players? No. I know uh, Ulio, Cruz, and that Pesoric. Pachoric. Pachor yeah. Oh, I murder his name. He's a real nice fellow. He's <laughs> real nice. Yes, he is. He's good. He's a good fellow. Well, why is it that in the old days the ball players would tend to come over and have a beer and a sandwich, and today you don't think they, they don't come as often? They're not allowed to come on this side, the street. They take them home in buses, and they don't want them wandering the neighborhood. How has the neighborhood changed since, since you were those days? Most of it's torn down. It was Irish, then it turned to Croatian, and during the war, it turned to everything. When the, when the fans get rowdy now, what do you, how do you handle them? I put them out. I'm the bouncer. Well, come on now. You go up to these I guys. Oh, and tell them to get out. But not nice words like that. And they do what you say? Of course they do. Today, we open 5 or 5.30, and we'll close 11 or 11.30. That's it. Well, what if you have a big crowd in here at 11.30? Open the back gate and tell them to go. Well, but Francis, you could make a lot more money if you kept them in here longer. And I die sooner. <laughs> the last video today is a reflection on Chicago saloons. It's a timeless conversation between author, columnist Mike Royko and our friend, teacher, mentor, Studs Turkle. It's uh, something we'll never see again. We're seated in the Chicago Tavern, Mike Royko and I. Mike, as you probably know, is the preeminent columnist, not simply here, but pretty much pound for pound, the journalist in the country. And we're talking about, thinking about a tavern where we're seated now, Chicago Tavern. And I'm thinking, Mike, 
What's the first thought comes to your mind when I say tavern, early days, and now? Well, besides booze, uh, neighborhood. That's really what, 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 what I think about it. Neighborhood people. Uh, the tavern, a tavern is much more than a place where you get a drink. Because you can get a drink, uh, you can buy a pint in the liquor store and get a drink in the street corner. Uh, the neighborhood tavern, then, when I was a young guy, when I was working in my father's tavern, uh, and in many places now, uh, served a lot of functions. Community center, social center, political debating hall, uh, the country club for the working guy, uh, group therapy. Mm. Couldn't afford a shrink, so you go talk yeah. to the bartender. And somebody in the bar who understood what his problem was. <laughs> uh, a lot of things, a lot of things. Oh, so the, the bartender now and then would do some social work, too. That is, he, he'd fill in for a guy when uh, he's not supposed to be at the bar, and the old lady thinks he's somewhere else. Well, and well, so there was the question. You didn't get much of that in the tavern. Because a guy, if, if a guy wasn't in the bar, if his wife called my father's bar, which was unusual, but if a wife called the bar and my father said, he's not here, my God, where could he be? Then he was in serious trouble. I mean, being in the bar wasn't yeah. that bad. Yeah. But he's not in the bar, where is he? Yeah. Maybe with some <laughs> hussy, you know? <laughs> so that, well, that really happened. Um, and, you know, we had the, 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 the word profit center. Uh, today, today, all these modern, a lot of modern bars are run by guys who went to, to hotel and uh, uh, restaurant training school. So everything's a profit center, you know. Uh, if they were running this place, the Planters Peanuts would be a profit center, and uh, the Tabasco sauce would be a profit so center. So the idea of popping... And, 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 not, not, yeah, nothing would be free. Everything's yeah. got to be accounted yeah. for. So popping would, would throw things yeah, out of kilter. Yeah. My father, we had a profit center. It was called, it was called the Bookie. Uh, that was a good profit. That was our best profit center. And that you didn't, you didn't need a computer for, you know, because you, uh, you'd have to burn the computer if the cops came. But there was on paper. You yeah, but there was the paper. Yeah, that was, uh, well, you know, would take that, that wasn't a big so. deal. No. So, of course, what you're saying really is in the way a, a social aspect oh, sure. is missing today, in a way the social aspect that was present then well, my, takes a different form. I, I think the saddest thing I've ever seen is, is guys, not the saddest thing I've ever seen, but in yeah. terms of, the, we're talking about drinking patterns. Guys who rush into the uh, big commuter station, Union Station, finish work, and they run over to what is like a, a cafeteria type of thing. They walk over and say, oh, give me a double martini and a, and a styrofoam cup. And they pay for it, and then they go rushing off to get on their train. No, that's, they're going to be on that train for 45 minutes, and then they're going to go from the station to their house. And the poor guy, if he, if he lived in the city, he'd go home and he could walk down to the corner, have a relaxed drink, have a civilized conversation. Yeah, I suppose, uh, talking about that commuter going on that train back to the suburbs, sometimes he grabs that drink and it's in a paper cup. Yeah, styrofoam. Plastic, paper. styrofoam. Yeah, sure. I, somewhere you can't imagine that guy of old days drinking a styrofoam cup. It doesn't fit. You know, I think he gives the pen. You know, I'm going to have a shot and a beer. A boiler maker and his helper. Oh. <laughs> I think we got it.